you to judge me. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Welcome to another one of our legendary ghost hunts. More of Grizzly Trail tonight. We haven't done one for a while. We had a couple of you mentioning on the site how much you enjoyed when we do a trail that you can follow. And we're starting in a place that people who live here don't even know exists. I was told a story this week about the bleeder. And then I discovered the story they were telling me wasn't new. It was a story of a ghost that had been seen in a particular place for over 500 years. That's, that's no short thing to do because some ghost stories happen and within five years, nobody's speaking of them ever again. Do you recognize remotely where we are yet? Well, I've lived in this town before and I wouldn't recognize it from here. I'm in Morpeth. Well, outskirts of Morpeth. And it's on the other side of this bridge that the ghost of the bleeder is said to be. So come on with us. We'll talk about it. The person who started Morpeth was a man called William de Murley. And his son was called Ranulf. Ranulf took control of all of Morpeth after his dad. But when Ranulf was only two years of age, his wet nurse came down here. This is the western crossing of the Wandsbeck River. We're going to be seeing this river again further up in Morpeth, but nobody ever comes here. And you must see these spiders, Tony. Double webs. Double webs, triple webs. Worldwide web. <laughs> Massive. And they're all the way along the bridge. So the story really is, is a one of historical importance, really. But it's interesting that the man who actually set up the entire town, the man who was given the power to rule the roost, William de Murley, should have something happen to his son at the age of only two. And it was just on the opposite side of this bridge. And again, we come really to the back alleys of Morpeth. Kenny's playing with spiders. As for us, we have to go just here, just to the right of this bridge. This is where it all happened. Now, we're back in time. And I mean, we're talking, we're talking 1080 here. And you can get right down. You can lap the river. Now here, you can't actually could manage to come down here. You see the waterway, the underside of the bridge. This place down here used to be a crossing, a wooden crossing. It went across there before they put a big metal bridge in place. You can see how the concrete here just disappears and you find yourself in the wani. You can see some of the old stone from the original buttresses in the water to the side. There's a few more on the opposite side. There's a few in the, you can see they're creating a weird kind of effect over yonder. Now, the story of the bleeder. I just heard it this week and I thought, we've got to do this story. We've got to do a grizzly trail. Now, William de Murley, the man in charge, the king really, and he wasn't a king, but he was that important to the people here. He ruled them like a king. And he sent his wet nurse to come along the river. And she came down here. She put a blanket on the grass and there's not much, the grass is like scrubby at the moment, but by the, the beautiful river, remember none of it was affected by man at the time. It was quite wild. She came down, put a blanket by the side of the river. And then halfway through the guard standing there with his, with his spear and his shield guarding her, decided he would go for a little walk because he was bored stiff and just standing watching them eating nice treats of one sort or another. So he disappeared. While he was away, a wayfarer, maybe he's an early reaver. Remember, this is 1080. The French had just been in charge for 
14, 15 years and had given William de Merle the rights for all of, all of this part of Northumberland. And there is the heir to everything that he stood for by the side of the river. Well, this vagabond assaulted the wet nurse, stole all the food, stole some money, never bothered with the child because he had no reason to. He didn't even know who the child was. Well, when the guard came back, he went running, alerted everybody. A lot of soldiers came down, massive fuss. And so William de Merle actually came here to make sure that his child was all right, admonished the wet nurse for not noticing that the guard had gone, and then asked, bring the guard to me. The guard was bent over and lashed, and he was lashed to such a degree, the lashing killed him. So he was beaten to death on this spot with birch twigs. Down to the bone, he bled out. His body was then placed into the river and floated down. Now, depending on tides and on how much rain comes from the hills, this river goes up and down. It's, sometimes it's very shallow. Sometimes it can be shockingly high powered. And the body floated out of sight. And for 500 years after that, he was, this man was still being seen walking around this area, hunched over, and not white, not a grey wisp, blood red, soaked with blood, walking very carefully and easily around these paths. And I'm thinking, surely if there's a ghost called the Bleeder, yeah. in a place where I've lived, I'd have heard that story. Yeah. And yet, it's not a part of Moba that I'd ever been to, never seen any of this. But we're going to do a grizzly trail. We're heading in all directions. I apologise for my crib sheet. Just the dates I'd never be able to remember otherwise. Uh, I have been lax. Behind the camera, we have Hollywood, Hollywood Tony McShane. Kenny D with me too. And we're heading up and out. We've got a lot to see. And a lot of places that if you've ever visited Morpeth, and you like Morpeth, the Perry you do Morpeth. actually. Yeah. If you've been to Morpeth before, you'll know a lot of the places where I'm going, but I bet you don't know the stories. Some of them are absolutely amazing. And... The adventure really begins on a thing called Gashouse Lane, which I believe is this one here. Now it's been heavily built on, a lot of houses, a lot of quite nice houses here too. And uh, this whole place was called Morpeth because of what happened on the outskirts. Now this was the outskirts of Morpeth. You weren't in Morpeth. You travelled along the riverbank, along this road. This is long before there was any buildings here at all. Because of the Mor the Morte Peth that Morpeth gets its name from comes from the path right the way around the entire town. So it's not on one side. All it's all the way around. Because people were attacked here. And this was the the ground where two families, two Border Reaver families, the Wilsons and the Simpsons. Oh, hang on a second. No, I might be wrong. There's a house here or hereabouts because the Simpsons and the Wilsons were Border Reavers that prayed in this area. There you go. Oh, Simpsons Cottage. And Simpsons Cottages. And the Border Reavers, it just shows you that some of the border reavers decided to come and stay, and now they've got out that it's called Simpson Cottages. I mean, they, well, they must have done. They're Simpsons, and the re they were reaving here. What does reaving mean? I've always wondered. Are oh, reavers? It means uh, pillaging, pillaging, stealing, yeah. reaving. Now the border reaver. Two clans, though, and I know. Reaver, yeah, yeah, Robsons. Um, the reavers prayed on. Those particular families prayed on the Morty path, on the murder path. And then King James VI of Scotland, who was King James I of England, got involved when three families were butchered on this track. They were trying to get to the safety of the town. And yes, there'll be people about tonight. 
I think we're cutting. We're, we're cutting at one point. I think it's here. Yes, we're. Oh, I beg your pardon, Tony. We've overshot. We've got to go up here. At this crossing here, just on this spot, three families of people were trying to get into Morpeth. Now, while they were still on the Mortier path, on the murder path, they were at risk because there was no soldiers, there was no guardians, no other families to help them. It, and, and you see, all the buildings here are, are brand new. You know, they're, none of them are, are really old buildings. So there were desperately three carts with, ev with everything they owned on them. Families just trying to get into Morpeth to save their lives. And they were butchered here on this spot right here. Watch your back. I think he may. I don't know which way he's going. Is he going to tell us? Or do we have to guess? Let's just get out the road. Which way are you going? Indicate would help. Right. Um, yeah, I'm not bitchy. Started, I'm getting another one as well. Just to annoy us. He's not indicating either. Not that it's a pet peeve or anything. Anyway, um, so the three families were butchered here. Because those three families were butchered all at once, and this was a total of 17 people murdered, their carts, their animals, everything they had taken away. And, to me, and it's, it's like what happens now. You'll know yourself, if somebody pinched your flat screen and you'd paid 500 quid for it, you know they're going to get 70 quid in the pub for it. Yeah. You know, and you know, you'd, if they knocked on the door and said, look, I'm going to damage your house to the value of 300 quid and pinch your flat screen, unless you give me 75 quid, it would be cheaper just to get 75 quid. However, um, <laughs> <laughs> there's that. However, so King James the sixth of Scotland, who became King James the first in England, right. the first time the two were together, he decided that something had to be done. So he sent down armed men to patrol the murder path, the Mortier path, for the very first time. And their very first job was to lie in wait at the side of the, the Mortier path until a group of Rivas came by. There was a group of 23 of them who were all hanged on the site where the families were killed. So it was here. Just here. So if you're looking for a place that should have ghosts, I mean, yeah. it's unlikely because it doesn't, yeah. this is this is not your ancient castle or your stately home. However, I've got a story up this road about a poltergeist that will blow you away. I can't tell you which house, but it's up here. It's up this, or is it that street? Just let everyone know that we are live. Um, I think because we've started on time, people think it's a recording. <laughs> no, we're not a recording. Hello, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> live this is live i'm waving yeah but if this was recording you could still do that um no we can see it. i'm waving and it's this time <laughs> <laughs> no it's up, it is, it's up here it's up here it is 2015 yes we're live yeah we're, <laughs> live. we're just on time and i can do the links beforehand now so <laughs> this street here we're live. We're really dead. Dead <laughs> <laughs> we can't be that lucky now up this street Many moons ago, before I qualified as an exorcist, because I, I qualified in 2020, um, there was a guy who used to contact the program a lot, a, an ex-Catholic priest. His name was Father Flanagan. And uh, he told me about a place up here that we actually visited together. Now, this whole place here used to have fairly well-off homes and houses. But the houses on this side, the other side of the road, this side of the road, yeah. were poor. Right. And sometimes they couldn't afford their rent. And they paid their rent in shillings, silver shillings. Right. And it was called mail. The, the, hang on. No, sorry. We're not going to be squished. Uh, the taxes at the time was called paying the mail the mail yeah. and if you paid in silver it was called white mail if you couldn't afford to pay your rent you had to give them animals you had to give them animals you had to find another way to pay your mail and they called that blackmail and that's where the word blackmail comes from now that's a brand new house 
That's a very old house. One of these houses, one of these houses around, around, around here somewhere had a, an issue. And the story went that they were having trouble and the woman was waking up every night. She lived on her own. This is about 1983, 84. And this lady had scratches on her body. And when she got examined, she asked her doctor, what could possibly be causing me to be scratched across my back and scratch it? And they're not places where somebody sleeping at night, even if they had long nails, would scratch themselves. It does look spooky, doesn't it? Have you seen that over there, Tony? Can you, you see the mist rising? Mm, yeah. Well, come on the eye. I'm not sure I can on the screen. Yeah, a little bit. Just picking it up. Well, anyway, the house was exorcised five times and it made no difference. During the sixth exorcism, a local priest from Morpeth was pushed down the attic stairs, ended up with concussion, and he was taken up to a local cottage hospital. Now, the sixth exorcism discovered, and now this was in the newspapers, the press picked up on this. It was in the Morpeth Herald, and it was also in the Evening Chronicle, that the entity was found in the attic and forced out and the exorcism was a complete success and they checked on it time after time after time because the first five had completely failed. The woman with the claw marks on her ended up in total having 74 stitches in wounds in various parts of her body. Now at the time some people talked about whether it was it's a thing called Munch, Munchhausen syndrome, where people hurt themselves or hurt other people. And uh, it was discovered not to be that. The doctor declared that the, the wounds were so deep and they were in such strange places that they had to be real. Now, you can argue uh, six exorcisms, real priests, because uh, it was a canon from North Yorkshire who came up who was the head exorcist for the whole area, who eventually got rid of it. Oh dear, 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 dear. Right, anyway, if we get to the end of this street, I know, yeah, I know, I'm getting a headache already. Um, when you get to the end of this street, if you live in Morpeth, you'll probably recognize there's next, there's a big massive car park just up the road. They've started a nice motorcycle shop with a cafe here, if you're, if you're into your bikes. And, Ah, no, bless. Right, so come down here, I think we can get over where we can. Ken, give and die if you can avoid it. Now, have a look at the name. A little bit later on, we're going to be visiting his house. Yeah. Do you know who he is? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Right, well, we're going to his house later. But first of all, yeah. Yeah, Cuthbert. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So you come down here. See, you think I don't listen? Well, I know you pay attention. Now, back in the 1540s, they, they did a thing that I've mentioned on a few trails and ghost hunts, a thing called the rough wooing, which was get everybody to love the crown. In any areas that didn't love the crown had to be roughly made to love the crown. So the rough wooing was essentially killing people. And I've mentioned this a few times on uh, one of our trips when we came to do Carlyle Park and the Morpeth Castle. We're crossing the road here, but we're just, you've got to be a little bit careful. Turkish cuisine, if you fancy it, a thesis. They do takeaways. We've got to get across. Now we're good. Let's do it. Now, if you come down here, first of all, you see an absolutely stunning the rose window, and it's in 
its full showy offiness. You don't need your, your light for that one, Kenny. Look at that. How beautiful is that? What a bit of work. But in 1540, before this building was in its full glory, if you walk across here, do you see the grand seat made out of one of the original doors? How fantastic is that? Now, around the time that this place, did you see the manacle, the knocker on the seat? Around the time that this place, yeah, sit on the throne, can you? Well. Around the time that this door was installed in its original home, 1540, the rough wooing, when they got as far as Morpeth, the king was informed, hang on a second, we're trying to woo it for you, but the people up here, they're all crackers, they're all mad as hats, they don't care. So the king said, I shall send some soldiers to guard the city. And they set up in a barrack on this spot, just beside where there was an old abbey here. It has since become this amazing church with a rose window. And I've mentioned before that they were Italian cavalrymen on short horses. And they were settled here. Now, these Italian mercenaries, paid by the king because he was fighting in wars and he needed men elsewhere, they came here and their job was a simple one. Just make sure there's no trouble. But they caused all the trouble. They raped the women. They murdered anybody that they didn't like. Or is, well, you obviously hate the king. Yeah. They were the biggest problem in Morpeth at the time. And on their very first day arriving here, they, they kicked everybody out of the old building that was here and said, we shall have that because it was right next to Telford Bridge. And Telford Bridge had old fashioned bridge was there and they thought we can put a toll on that and we can get some money off everybody that comes into the town and that's what they did and 14 people refused to pay at the bridge so they did a thing called scuttling where if you didn't pay your toll they sat you on the side of the bridge and tipped you into the water and there's the bridge where everybody was scuttled light it up kenny so they sit you on the side of the bridge and pushed you over. Some people were killed. Some people were badly damaged. And nobody oh, cared. Well, you, you just didn't get it. Well, that's, what, 25 feet, 30 feet? Yeah. You'd say about that. Oh, Not at all. Now, there's a ghost that walks here along the side of the church. Apparently, and she's a famous ghost at that. King Henry VIII's sister. Yeah, do it. Take a walk. Along this side place where Kenny's walking right now, King Henry VIII's sister, Margaret Tudor, was staying at Morpeth Castle. She lay ill in Morpeth Castle for a number of months. She never fully recovered. She ended up dying of a stroke in Scotland. And on her deathbed, she said, when I die, tis to Bonnie Morpeth, for I was never happier than walking its river with the kingfishers and the heron. And it's said that she's been seen behind this church, St. George's Reformed Church. She walked along the bank from the bridge, looking at the birds. Now, this wall on the left-hand side wasn't there at the time. So this was the view she saw, this one here. The river and the riverbank. Watch it. Now, you got to remember, it wouldn't have been cut like it seems to have been cut now. It would be reeds and birds, kingfishers plunging down into the, into the river. Amazing. So keep your eyes peeled. If you see anything, capture it by all means. Her ghost. This church here was built in 
1860. It is an amazing church, the Reformed Church. There you go. This church was built originally on an old mill, uh, along with the, the building on the other side, the Chantry, which is just on the other side of the road there. Um, and also the original chapel that stood here was amazing too. But if you, there's the, the steeple right up the top. Not everybody pays particular attention to that. And underneath this building, when it used to be a mill, making bread, baking bread, making cakes, and you know the uh, a water wheel that crushed the wheat so that it could become bread was on this site. It is a beauty. But in 1782, Daniel Wallace was a miller here, and he got his shirt caught in the side of the mill wheel and he was pulled into the the wheel and his body crushed and he was brought to the old chapel here which wasn't as grand as this building and he was laid out and people from Morpeth came down to pay tribute to a, a true tradesman who looked after his people well so Daniel Wallace Caught in a mill wheel. The chant. Oh, there you go. Thank you very much. Da da. The chantry is directly across, and that's another famous building from years and years ago. And we start to see and have proper ghost stories along here. This is the main street of Morpeth. It's called Newgate Street, and I'll explain. Newgate is because at this end is where the new gate was built to stop people, to keep the baddies out. We told you that that was a river trail just there to keep people out. At the opposite side of, of uh, New Gate Street is Old Gate, where the other gate was on the opposite side. And here is the, looks like it is. This is an emergency exit, only use the main door, which is around the corner. No, it's shut. It's shut. Let's get across safely if we can. Oh, you, you take your life in your hands on this one. After this car, Kenny, quickly. Quick, oh, too late, Kenny, you're on your own. So, this is the Chantry. What a place. Now, this is interesting. Look at this. Yeah. Do you see? Beautiful windows. Now, there are markings from the original days. They're just metal posts to hold the building together. I heard a story about the blocked up window. And it was said that at the time of the Chantry, and we're going back as far as 1290, there was a story about how a priest at the original Chantry, which was called All Saints, this is before they had their first hit, Never Ever, um, a priest stepped out of line and ended up, they weren't allowed to have partners, they weren't allowed to have girlfriends, waves, And one of the priests stepped out of lane. And it was said that where he lived in the chantry, they locked him away. And he kept sneaking out the window to be with the other ladies. Now, I don't know whether that's true. It's a lovely story. So eventually, the head of the abbey at the time said, he's not getting out. I've got the key to his big, heavy door. We're going to block up the window for all time. And he couldn't get out anymore to chase the women. Now, I know when it comes to the assault of small children, the church now just move a priest to another parish. But this was in earlier days. This, we've not seen the front of this place, but I have to draw your attention 
to this building here. This is called Beaumont. Here it is. Now, normally we don't we don't talk about other ghost groups at any level at all. But in 2022, which is not that long ago, a ghost group was doing a, a ghost trail of Morbeth. And in one of the upstairs windows, they caught the picture of a figure. It was a, a true, genuine cap. Oh, hello. Kenny, quickly. Just quick as you can. Light up these, these windows. In 2022, they caught a ghost tour was going around, and in one of the windows, they caught a dark figure. And this is why people, wherever they go, should always, if you're doing a ghost tour, take photos everywhere, and then see what you capture when you come back. And I think it was that window there. And the image is on the internet. It's, it's I think the Chronicle have even got it on one of their websites. Right. And it looks like, a figure of an old woman wearing a, a hooded gown. And I think it's that window of Beaumont, that one just there. This one. I believe so. That's only one of four chantries, chapel like that, the bridge in England. Yeah. I was reading it there. It's got a Amazing. Door. Well, tell everybody. It's interesting. What, the 1300s? Yeah, absolutely. 1250 is when it was yeah, first that. built. And this was the original door here. You can see it's been bricked up too. And uh, but didn't, uh, the other thing that I haven't told you about this is this was a school and it was also George Young's business. He was one of the first people in all of Britain to sell mineral water, to bottle mineral water. And they did it in this place. Now it's pretty much a museum where people can come and buy little mementos of Morbeth. Posh, dear, but nice. The Chantry. And there's the tower over yonder, Tony, if you want to catch it. Beautiful little bell tower that it used to have at the top. And then, I think we've got everything off there. Yes, tipped off the bridge. Hang on, we're moving. We're getting there. Chantry floor. Here we go. Betty Bell. This. Two great stories. Now, we've barely been in Morpeth for two minutes. And if you look back, you can see the, the lit up cross on the on the church there with the, the clock tower. It's a bonny look. But it's over here, Tony. Two tremendous stories. First of all, Ken, this is a nice Indian restaurant. They've got a few. They've got the uh, Tandu Mahal halfway up the street. They've got a Thai restaurant further up. Nice place to eat. However, look at this building. All the way to the end. Ignore the shops. Ignore the tandoori. Ignore this old building here. What do you think this was? You're not on the right track. This was... Yeah, it belonged to the council. It was the old police station. Was it? And a man called Alec Wilson was arrested for the murder of his wife. His wife and child were found dead in Morpeth. Alec Wilson went to court. Now, the thing is, Alec wasn't even in Morpeth at the time his wife and child died, right? He wasn't even in Morpeth. He can prove he was somewhere north of Annick doing some farm work. And yet he was arrested because his wife and child were found dead in a place called Annett's Ford, which isn't too far away from here. He was brought here, arrested. He went to court. They found him guilty. No evidence, just because he happened to be, and quite often it is family matters, that kind of thing. He was in there on the first floor and he hanged himself in, 
front. And actually, you can, if you look inside that building there, you should be able to see, because they used to have a, a, like a roof joist across the center. Can you see it? I don't know whether you can. Well, there was a roof joist and you could see the guy's body hanging and somebody had to literally walk into the police station, which is now number 10 A, but it used to be on the whole block. They had to go in and say, you do know there's somebody dead upstairs. And it was Alec, bless him, who, uh, Alec Wilson, hanging on the first floor. Now, if you want, we're not even sure if this is a ghost story or not, but it's just lovely. It's over here. This building here. Lovely old building. On the corner of Chantry Place. Now we're not certain whether it's this window here. Or this window here. Now I think Morpeth Town Trail, I think you can see. Now, as I say, it's either that window there or it's this window here, Kenny. You see it? Just there. Now, everybody that has told me this story says it's the window above the sign on Chantry Place. So it has to be that one. It's got to be that one. And it's a story of a lady called Betty Bell. Betty Bell lived in this house for her entire life. She died aged 104. Now, when she got old, now, when would you consider old being? <laughs> 70? You think? Uh, 80? 80? Oh. 90? Yeah. Well, when she got old, apparently she took to her bed. She couldn't get out of bed anymore. And she missed people coming and saying hello. Now, back in the day, it wasn't a window like that. As you can see, that's a new double glazed window. The original window in there used to open. And Betty Bell's bed was right beside the window. So people used to come along and when the window was open, they'd chuck buns through the window for Betty. And Betty, all, she never came to the window because she was literally bed bound. But what she used to do was she could get her hand to the window and she'd go and give a thumbs up if, you know, if, if she liked whatever you'd thrown through the window. Now, Betty Bell ended up dying in there and it said that the way that you attracted her attention, now this was a time long before cars, there'd be the odd horse and cart. It was a deathly quiet time. If you whistled for Betty, she'd come to the window and she'd wave. So whistle, see if I you can get I'm not a good whistler, but I'll give it a go. <whistles> Be brilliant. If you saw a hand, you'd poo your pants from you there. That's a bit. But that's the story of Betty Bell. I just think what a lovely story that even though people knew this woman that they'd known for most of their lives, they'd come and see her on Chantry Place. And we look across the road to our next one. And it's here, next to Saks, Kelso Street. This is called New Phoenix Yard now. The bell's ringing in the clock tower, which is relevant because we're going to see that soon. There it says, there's the title, New Phoenix Yard. But this, back in the day, used to be called the Cringe. Now, all of the old towns back in the day had this type of thing. And they were used mainly, you can hear the echo, they were used mainly by what they called cut purses because everybody didn't have bags. They had purses hanging on strings and these kids had knives and they'd walk past you and they'd go and they'd cut the string, grab your money and then leg it. Well, the reason that you know that this is 
the cringe is for this reason, not just because somebody's drawn a pair of testicles on the wall. It's this. As you see, you can get away from the street, nobody can see you, and you're here. You've, cut, you've taken somebody's purse, you and your mates are here, dividing up the money, and the alley alley in. Have you heard of the big ship sales on the alley alley? Yeah, yeah. Here, the kids would hide around the corner, and they'd share their monies out. However, one day, a group of kids working as a team, came down the cringe to hide around the corner and they got caught. And here, one of the kids was kicked to death and they hanged him or hung him from the lintel, which is not there anymore. It's gone, isn't it? You see, it would have been here. Well, they hung him from a hook here. They'd already kicked him to death and he was bleeding. And they left him hanging in this spot. Now, it's said that this area is said to be haunted right next door to Saks. There was a story in 1991 where somebody rang me on the radio saying that Saks was haunted. So but the, the body of that kid was left hanging here. And anybody who wanted to get to and fro, because they would bring carts up here, they would bring horses and carriages up here, they had to get one of their men to hold, to put his body to one side till the card got passed and then let it swing back into place. So grisly stories. And this is just, I mean, this is just a way you get round the back, a quick shortcut a little, you know, that's what we're talking about here. Amazing. Just in every direction, there's a, a strong story. And then the next one is a pub called the Ironmongers. And it's just here. So if you take a look at the, the building, amazing. Did you ever go into Smales while it was in existence? No, not sure. John Smales Limited. You see, it's um, lighted up, Kenny. It's, uh, it's known as the Iron, it's known as the Ironmongers now. And it's a pub and it's a restaurant and it's posh and very nice indeed. John Smales was a Kelso Scot and he used to sell fishing tackle actually on the street a little bit higher up from a horse and cart. And fishermen would come up to his horse and cart and they would buy a fishing rod or some bait. And we're being serenaded beautifully by the, the clock tower because that is nice. But looking up at Smales's, there is a story about it because back in the day, um, this place was haunted. He moved into the new building, that's this, in 1920. But when he got in there, there was a ghost apparently already. And the ghost was um, of a merchant who was murdered on the top floor and his rotting body was found in a windowless building. And it's said that when Smales moved into the building, the first thing he did was put new windows across the whole top floor so that the ghost of the merchant could see into the street and watch everybody go along their way. And he never got, any, he never got bothered by the ghost ever again because of that. Now, there's said still to be a ghost on the top floor of the woman who died in 2010, whose name was Isabel Smale, OBE, because Smales has played such a huge part uh, to the history of, of Morton. So maybe Isabel's in that building, along with the merchant who can now see out of the upstairs windows. That might be him in the end. You never know. Ironic as well, isn't it? You're talking about like the bleeding ghosts all around. Oh, red yeah, and I'm picking up there. Okay. I know. <laughs> it is, absolutely. Good evening. Thanks for that. It was kind of you. Right. So, on we go to our next cubby hole, which is Corporation Yard, which was actually on this side of the building. I think it's next to uh, 
super drum, which is just here, right hand side yeah, there, Tony. Ages, it's we haven't done a grizzly, I know. It's great. No, you don't worry. Don't worry. That's good. You go. It's more with. You can go then and get into your, yeah. what you, your lotus position. There's a yoga place. There's a dance school uh, upstairs across one of This is it. Corporation Yard. Look at the ceiling. Gorgeous, isn't it? Corporation Yard. Tall enough for horses to go through again. Because where Super Drug is and Marlowe. Um, a, a live show we're live on air at the present moment telling the history of Morton. Well, I'm sorry if I. We, well, I wasn't you weren't photographed, photographed actually. So. You weren't photographed, but. Uh, oh. <laughs> Certain amount of self importance there. That, uh, yeah, I don't, absolutely. And I, I don't ever remember putting a, a light on anybody's face in there at all. We were on the top floor. But anyway, hey, can I please everybody? Duck's back. Water up it. So anyway, Corporation Yard was made big enough. And as you can see, if you're riding a horse through here, you're not going to bump your head. This isn't like a, a little narrow track because the buildings on both sides, Superdrug and Marlow, apparently used to be an old coaching in so people would come they didn't have this there at the time um and the staff would grab hold of a horse take it around the back and round the back and uh, it's around oh, here excuse me were you what's it that you you <laughs> <laughs> well we're just terribly polite we listen we listen very carefully and then do what we're going to do anyway but this is where the old coach and, and i know now it's kind of used for a car park and what have you but this is where the old uh, coaches used to be stacked and stored while people went into the coaching house to have their food. And this is the interesting thing about this area is, first of all, there's nothing to look at apart from the backside of Marks and Spencer's, right? Yeah. yeah. You quite often see police station. There's a, a recycling, all your bins for recyclings up there. But this area here, 1827, a man called Harris used to send on coach. People would come here with their coaches. Harris would look to see if there was any room on the coach for him to get a few more big boxes. Uh -huh. And this was a time, who else was active in 1827? In Edinburgh. Oh my God. Birkin Hare. Oh, right. And Harris used to get corpses from local cemeteries around Morpeth and add them to the coaches that were understocked you know if somebody wasn't carrying a lot of stuff sticks one and they'd stick an extra one on wouldn't declare it no. when you get up to edinburgh take it off carry on. take it off Back to the under. it goes to the doctor the doctor uses it to cut into people and what have you anyway tony i'm afraid we're heading back down to the main street again to upset some more of the locals do you know it, it flashed across my head when he says what are you doing i was tempted to say minding my own business oh, but i'm too polite I know, just too sure polite i should have just said it anyway yeah, said easy being wise after the event right along here oh dear it's not going to spoil me now I know. Right along here, another little bit of history, really. Now, that's the dan local dance school. Um, apart from the Tandoor Mahal being a stunning Indian, uh, it's a great restaurant. This place here, the old Herald Office Yard, we'll be talking about that in a second. Printer since 1831. Now, the old Herald office, what do you think their first story was? They, they released a newspaper. 1854. This is the, the old Herald office yard. 
All of these lockable. There is no public right away. But people use it as one. Um, 1854, something massive happened in 1854. Something that everybody who lives anywhere in the Northeast should know. 1854. Did it do with no. It was the date of the great fire of Gateshead in Newcastle. 53 people killed, 994 people seriously injured. And imagine if you're trying to put out a brand new newspaper, yeah. front page story, the great fire of Gateshead yeah. in Newcastle. And that is what they launched with here. Now, there are stories of uh, ghosts and what have you here or here about. It's said to have a ghost. If you have a look at the newspaper, I don't know what date's on here. 1924. There's a, a little... Look at that car, 110. Can't you see could, with your torch. Yeah, move it. Uh, just a, you could buy a Ford car for £110, but have a look at what the car looks like. That is scary. Also, they mention a place called Rutherford's have a new uh, sale on boots and shoes. Rutherford's is still here. It's on the opposite side of the road, just there, which is amazing. Apparently, this shop used to have a ghost. Wait, that wireless then, okay. <laughs> at the beginnings of it. But have a look at the, the you see the, the old fashioned shop beyond it? Because in there, lighting the whole place up. There were stories of a ghost in this building till 1950. And then the shop left the hands of the Mackays, even though it's still called Mackay. Um, well, yeah, absolutely. Had to get you one when we were in Hexham, if you remember. And then we're coming to two buildings. First of all, one of the biggest coach houses, it used to be known as the old Queen's Head, is that building there. It's now a building that's uh, like a cafeteria that sells cheese scones for about £3.50. <laughs> what? Oh, I split the screen. Hell's teeth. Okay. Um, so, we scratched the surface of a part of Morbid that we've never done before. We've upset our first local. Yay. Why not? It's always going to be able to do this. Always, it's it? a poshies. Ordinary people Morbid. let people get on. Panic. You're always going to brush the nose of the odd person who is, you just know his wife's not happy. But anyway, um, nature of the beast. Bottom line is, we've scratched the surface. We've got a lot more to go. We're going to some of the darker stories. And the next building we're touching has about eight stories because it's cursed. So I'd love you to come with us. How do they do that, Tony? Uh, there's a link in the video description on Facebook and YouTube. Just hit that, become a subscriber, a supporter, join the channel, and part two will be there. So it sounds very easy, and it actually is. It costs you about 80p a, a week for everything. You get everything we get. So make sure you do it, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. If we don't see you, ta-ra, and thanks for joining us. Anyway, let's rock on. So...